I'm Lindsey Brook with SAE International at the 2011 SAE World Congress at Cobo Hall in Detroit, and I'm with Jay Iyengar, who is uh, Global Director and Chief Engineer of Chrysler's Vehicle Electrification uh, Propulsion System uh, Technologies. Jay, nice hey, to see you. Nice to see you as well. Uh, could you explain to us uh, really what Chrysler's uh, electrification strategy is in terms of developing technologies in-house versus outsourcing technologies? Okay, um, looking, at the looking at our electrification strategy, as far as the components themselves are concerned, getting into the details of the components, engineering the components in great detail, uh, we were prefer partnership with suppliers and have the suppliers work with us very closely on, we may understand all about the component technology details, we may even own a part of the IP associated with it, but we would like the suppliers to mass produce it. Hmm. And the reason behind that is to be able to share that across the you know, across the enterprise, hmm. not just one company own one component. Hmm. You will never get the mass, the mass scale production that you're looking for to really bring the cost down. So partnership with suppliers, partnership with other companies, knowing enough about the components to do the integration ourselves, uh, and just outsourcing the component manufacturing to the, to the suppliers. That's been our strategy going forward. Hmm. Um, if things change in a few years where uh, if electrification becomes the mainstream that it's on every application, we're going to rethink that strategy. But at this point, uh, till the time we actually bring up the over, overall you know, volumes up, I think it makes sense to have a shared relationship with the suppliers. And Chrysler will be handling its own algorithm, control algorithm development? Yes. System integration that we think is, a, is IP that we 100% are going to own. Mm -hmm. So at this point, all of the control systems, integration, um, all of the ideas associated with you know various components coming together, not just uh, software, but, but even mechanically and electrically as well, it's all completed on in-house. And that's the area we're going to focus on. Mm -hmm. That includes motor controls, uh, the entire hybrid controls, uh, the, the battery con part of the battery controls as well. Uh, within the control system, there is a layer that's very specific to the hardware, and there's a layer that's application specific. The application specific that we would own, Chrysler would own, and anything that's generic to the hardware, we would let the suppliers own it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, Chrysler is a full line manufacturer, building everything from small cars up to you know the biggest Ram trucks. Uh, is it a challenge to commonize electric? electrification systems, components, etc. when you've got such a broad product portfolio to, uh, to serve, so to speak? Yes, in the area of electrification, one system doesn't fit all, as you're aware. Uh, when it comes back to, apply, there's two ways to look at it. If do you want to treat electrification as another option on your existing vehicle, if you want to take that approach, then you have to worry about packaging of various components. Do the vehicle architectures going forward take into account, accommodate, for example, batteries and battery sizes and all of that? Mm -hmm. So future programs we are already taking into account to make sure that the architectures are, I would say, electrification friendly. Mm -hmm. um, and even among them, among them, if you can commonize on electrical architecture to be the same, all the little details of what it takes to integrate the vehicle. If, if all those things can be the same, it makes it a lot easier and a lot less... Um, complex and even cost effective to be able to introduce the products. Um, as far as the various components that make up the electrification, going from a mild hybrid to a full EV, about 85% of the components can be shared across the board. Wow. Um, either you, you, you share them, the, you, you can exactly make the same exact common component, or you can make a common core with an adaptation, adaptation to, the, to the application. So really going forward, we are trying to look at it more fundamentally and say, how can I really make these things common and have a flexible architecture, whether I can become a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid or an EV, and all that I do is increase the size of the battery appropriately to go with it. And then even having battery cells be the same. Um, within, um, when you're looking at the, obviously hybrids have a power cell and the plug-in hybrids have an energy-related cell. Right. But the overall, the, the battery management system, the, you know, making modules, you, as much as possible we can commonize among our product lines as well as with the industry. And I think that's the only way we can bring the cost down and really get the true volumes up that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. This morning on the technical panel that you were uh, you were on, there was a lot of discussion about permanent magnet motors versus, say, AC induction motors and other types. Uh, you know, there's concerns about rare earth metals. Where do you stand on the potential for, say, non-permanent magnet motors? Okay. 
there's a lot of concern on the raw material availability. There was a comment about certain countries own it, all of that. Yes, there is a concern. I think it's a supply and demand thing. If the demand goes up, and I think there's enough reserves in the world that more mines will come up. That's one part of it. Having said that, it doesn't make sense to depend on, on special materials for your mass production as well. Mm. So we see um, induction machines, which don't have permanent magnets, um, have a downside that they're not, they can never be as efficient as IPMs. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, you can spin them at a higher speed, they're a safer, I mean, there's lots of benefits with it. They're a little harder to control. Um, we see something like that be able to be on more of the EVs and um, more higher degree of electrification vehicles compared to IPMs will still have a role in hybrids where because the, because you integrate them into your transmission, let's say, mm -hmm. to be able to make them smaller, higher energy density, and efficiencies of 1 or 2% make a big difference in your overall fuel economy that you get. So both have a place in it, mm -hmm. um, and I think that induction machines and SRMs, we see that coming in as a future, mm -hmm. especially for EVs and, and, and EREV applications. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. When will we see Chrysler's first uh, electrified vehicle? Okay. Um, most of you don't know this, but I guess hopefully you do know this. We did introduce a hybrid um, vehicle in 2008. So uh, Dodge Durango and Chrysler Aspen hybrids. Um, currently we are in working with the Department of Energy for a few plug-in hybrid demonstration programs. One of them behind me right now that is going to be launched in the next month. That's a demonstration program, not a production program at this point. Mm -hmm. And in 2012, we'll be introducing a Fiat 500 um, full elect battery electric vehicle. Um, that's what we've announced so far. Obviously, we're working on other things, but that's what we've announced so far. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. So how are you instructing your teams? What sort of attributes will Chrysler EVs have that, say, are above and beyond the competition? So obviously, we do benchmarking. We're studying what the competition is. Nissan Leaf is just coming out. Okay. Volt is coming out. We, we, so we do understand what compromises were made in that. Um, as I mentioned in my panel earlier, you really need to provide value to the customer. Uh, it's not just about a specific drive cycle. You really need to maximize what you can provide to the customer. So it's all of the details of system integration, um, you know, providing smooth, smooth, op smooth operations, um, the drive quality, be able to operate at ext any extreme ambience and not drastically lose your range. Um, all of those little details, you know, thermal management of the system, all of those little details go into, go into effect to be able to do, to take it to the next level. Um, so we'll be learning from this experience with the plug-in hybrid vehicles and we're benchmarked competition. So as I mentioned, it's a system integration is what we are going to be uh, excelling in and having a product that the customer truly sees a value compared to a you know, product. Mm -hmm. You probably have seen reviews of people uh, driving competitive EVs and limitations that they're, that they're finding currently. Uh, I'm sure you've said the you know, reports and other things, but we are trying to address all of that and to be, to be truly be able to make it provide the value and make it modular so I can take it to the next level of technology. Mm -hmm. You having fun in your job? I am having, this is a dream as far as, uh, I mean, I was, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, but, but um, it's so interdisciplinary, the mechanical, electrical, electronics all comes together. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really exciting from an auto industry at this point to be in this area. Um, auto, you know, auto industry in general has kind of a um, bad reputation from being old technology, all of that. This is far from it. Um, and I hope that the younger engineers see this and you know, seek out the auto industry and to come and work on these areas. I, I really think we're in, the, we're in the brink of something you know, really great, and I think this is going to take off. It's not just a one-time, you know, one fad. It, it's going to take off, I believe. Well, I agree. Jay, we look forward to further developments at Chrysler in Chrysler's electrification program. Thanks so much Thank for taking the time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For SAE International, I'm Lindsey Brooke.